So I'm here with Chris Fuel, head of the Ram brand. Thank you very much for taking some time with me today. It's I really appreciate it. Great to be with you. So the first thing I'd like to know is kind of where the Ram brand started out at the beginning of the year and kind of how we've progressed to where we are now. Right, well, at, at the beginning of the year, Ram brand was preparing for our 25 model year MCA of the light duty pickup truck. And that production started in February and has been ramping up pretty much throughout the year. As I've mentioned before, we had some fits and starts with our sales progress and our production progress, and we've smoothed out a lot of those challenges that we had in the beginning of the year where our day supply and the dealer inventory was at a very high rate, around 180 days supply. And so we've really spent time retooling our marketing as well as our incentive strategy so that we can improve not only the value of the vehicles that are in dealer stock but also improve those turn rates and get back to those healthy inventory levels so that the order flows come through at a more normal rate. So we're at a really good position right now. Our dealer day supply is down around 130, 120 days so definitely a much improved position compared to where we were at the beginning of the year. But what I'm most excited about is the fact that they're now starting to see a regular flow of the 25 model year trucks hitting their inventory. And the RHO is definitely one that they've been excited to see. We've got completely sold out order position with a lot of our retail sold orders as well as the dealer stock orders. And you'll get a chance to drive this truck today, but the RHO is a really important part of our light duty truck lineup because it plays in the fastest growing subsegment, which is the sport segment. And we've been out of it for ab about not quite two years when the TRX went away. And the RHO is not intended to be a one for one replacement with the TRX, but it actually is positioned in that sweet spot of the sport truck market. $69.95 starting price point, fantastic off-road capabilities. The high output hurricane engine that delivers 540 horsepower and 521 pound-feet of torque. It just performs. It's great off-road, but it's great on-road as well. And our sport truck lineup is complemented by the Rebel and Rebel X. And on the heavy duty side, our power wagon continues to be the OG in that segment too. Yeah, and I want to say uh, the efforts that you've been making in terms of sales and inventory and all that had a really big impact for the month of September. I, I, I think Ram was up on 35%, is that right? We, we were up 35% in August. We were down a little bit year over year in September, but our daily sales rate was up 10%. And in October, we're tracking to be up about 40%. So we'll see, we still have another week to go to close out the month, but things are looking really strong for October. And then you mentioned getting back into the sport truck segment of the market. What does that do for the brand? Like what kind of customer are you expecting? And then, you know, uh, does it elevate the brand in any way or anything like that? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It, it does elevate the brand and the, the, the kind of people that we see in the sport truck segment are they younger? Yes, but you know, it's that young at heart, active weekend warrior kind of individual who they're investing in the sport truck for their weekend capabilities and activities, but it's also their daily driver. So they need it to kind of be that Swiss army knife that can do everything no matter what their use case might be on any given day. And the reason why we position this around that $70,000 price point is to be able to make it more accessible to a broader part of the market. And we're, we're just really excited about that. So the, between the RHO, the Warlock, and the Rebel, we've got a fantastic light duty off-road performance truck lineup to really hit it out of the park. Well, I appreciate your time, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Future Sean here. I've taken some time to organize my thoughts. And the first thing I wanna say is I was shocked when I heard 180 days supply. For a little context, I knew Ram built up truck supplies in 2023 to help ride out any UAW strikes during contract negotiations. But with that contract signed in November of last year, most of that inventory should have been gone by the beginning of the year. 
So to be around 180 days supply is shocking, and I'm surprised it was allowed to get that high. It may be part of the reason Chris Fuel was given the additional role of CEO of Ram in June. She's helped get inventory down to 120 to 130 day supply with fresh marketing and new incentives. But I believe a healthier level is under 100 days and that fresh marketing and incentives are not the long-term solution. I also have a hard time envisioning a scenario where a $70,000 sport truck turns everything around. But I don't think that's what the RHO was meant to do. And the good news is, Ram has improved inventory and sales look like they're trending up. I'll be watching how that continues to play out. The other good news for Ram is, even though I don't think the RHL will turn everything around, I do think this is a cool truck. And to help back that up, here's a conversation I had with Doug Killian, the Chief Vehicle Synthesis Manager. All right, Doug. Let's get into the guts of this truck, figure out what makes it so capable. Why don't we start with the wheels and tires? Absolutely, yeah, glad to talk about it. So, right at the contact patch, this is a Goodyear Wrangler Territory LT rated tire. It's five plies mounted on a B-lock capable wheel. And the key point there with five, pl five plies LT rating, puncture resistance is huge and you don't want to slip a tire on a bead. So bead locks for running in the sand, running at lower pressures. We got to keep a strong wheel tire set up on the ground. In order to do that, we start with a, with a extremely stout setup. The rest of the suspension, the rest of the chassis above it, doesn't matter if we don't have a good wheel tire set up. So from wheels and tires, why don't we go to upper and lower control arms here? Okay, yeah, so connecting there. Aluminum forging's a little tough to see, but I think if you catch in the wheelhouse there, upper and lower. Yep, and in terms of resistance to, to rocks and to taking uh, higher loads that are delivered as the truck is running through off-road environment, as it's maybe getting airborne, running through rocky terrain, that's managing higher loads that this truck's going to see over a base 1500, and those are unique parts to the RHO. And then how about the rear trailing link? I know you have okay. one of those here. Yeah, and in terms of suspension geometry, Every Ram 1500 has a lower trailing link, but what you'll notice here is that this is a longer unit. It's, a, it's taller in terms of cross-section, and that longer length actually allows for a more, uh, a your, more uniform travel of the wheel up and down as it goes through its full 14 inches of wheel travel in the rear. In fact, that's about four and a half inches more than a non-RHO, the base truck version, so a 50% increase in wheel travel really gives us more ability to manage energy and to go over bigger obstacles and keep the, uh, keep the body more steady and, uh, and go more places with more wheel travel. And then you all put some pretty trick dampers on this thing too, right? Yes, for sure. So yeah, talking about that wheel travel, that's where we manage all the energy as this truck is, is blasting through the off-road events. Bilstein Blackhawk E squared, that's a fully adaptive damper. It's electronically controlled. So we're controlling the flow in and out of the damper and then closing off those orifices or opening them up in order to give more or less damping depending on the situation. In addition, so it's an aluminum housing, fully aluminum housing, helps manage the heat of that, uh, of that damper. As oh, it's, fact, you've got one on the table. Yeah, in you? fact, yeah, yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah, we do. We have a cutaway here of a uh, Bilstein monotube damper with electronic controls that essentially are flowing, controlling the flow in and out of the, of the reservoir. It's a remote reservoir, which is, we've done a cutaway here, is uh, part oil and part gas, so nitrogen charged. Um, and this remote reservoir allows us to have more oil in the system. More oil means more heat dissipation. And that oil is actually traveling through braided steel hoses, which we can see on this example here. So high pressure, managing that oil, really with damping. One is the speed of the responses from the electronic system. So we can, we can open it up if we're on a, uh, let's say on a smooth road, um, or we want to really keep that steady body control. Or in fact, if the truck is starting to get airborne, what we in fact, uh, we're able to detect that through the sensors in the body. We then tighten down the damping on the compression side of the shock. And as the truck comes and, and essentially lands, we can control front and rear to, to give a steady landing to the, uh, to the truck. So we are able to do that quickly. We are able to absorb all that energy through these dampers. Really cool technology. So let's go talk about the heart of the beast now. Okay. <laughs> Up to the engine here. Yeah, Hurricane, 
HO. Hurricane is our straight six, three liter, twin turbo. Three cylinders feed each turbo. So we would say we have two smaller turbos than traditionally running one larger. And what that really helps uh, is that turbo lag is really not existent because those two smaller turbos are spooling up so quickly, they're delivering pressure uh, into the intake charge. 28 PSI, by the way, that's where we're getting 540 horsepower out of a three liter engine. Running a lot of boost pressure, but that boost pressure is, of course, designed into the block, into the crank, into the pistons, both of which are forged. So that, that let's say, where we have a stout chassis, we also have a very stout engine block um, and rotating components, uh, reciprocating components that are gonna manage all of that boost pressure and power. And you were saying during the presentation that even though it has the same horsepower rating as other high output engines in the lineup, yes. that this will act a little bit different out on the road. It will act different. So yeah, the actual, the power that we're seeing as we take a cold intake uh, charge, and we can see the, the hood mounted scoop here is in fact much more than aesthetic. Uh, we're pulling air in to the hood inner and dropping it into the air box. So that colder air charge allows for increased flow than a, a base vehicle, which has a an intake that's down closer to the grill. So cooler air charge, more dense, more oxygen. And then on the backside, exhaust is designed uniquely for RHO. It's true dual, equal length exhaust. There's also an H pipe in the middle. So we're able to connect those two, those two runners uh, for, for sound enhancement. So we're able to, to tune the sound a little differently here on this application of the Hurricane. And then in the exhaust system as well, as we have a damper which will open up, uh, or I'll say, let's say a passive flow control valve. As the engine RPMs increase, flow increases, that will open up, gives a different sound character and uh, freer flowing exhaust out to the rear. So it really makes, it gives the, uh, the Hurricane a unique sound and feel in an RHO than in any of our other Ram trucks. Cool, I mean, is there anything that we missed on this thing? You know, that's really the, uh, the heart of it. I will say one thing that we can take all of this together, both on the engine side and on the chassis side with drive modes. We have Baja drive mode, which allows those dampers to, to open the flow a little bit, like I was talking about in the, with that cutaway. That allows us to use more wheel travel, soak up more of that energy. Uh, that Baja mode also will change the transfer case setting. So we're putting 75% of the torque to the rear. So that's allowing the truck to drift a little more, opens up the we open up the stability control. So I will say that the, the one thing that kind of brings it all together is the drive modes that are selectable uh, right in the instrument panel. You can switch from Baja mode or tighten it up in sport mode. Uh, that will tighten up those dampers. That'll change the shift points. It's gonna make the truck feel faster. It's gonna be more responsive, more agile in its handling. And then you can just set it to auto also. And that's where all the sensors on the, on the body and the suspension are adjusting the dampers for the for the most steady ride and actually quite a serene ride for such a beast off road. You put it on the uh, on the highway, set it in auto. It's a uh, it's actually quite a serene place. It uh, it really makes it feel like a, you know like a luxury car at times when uh, especially when you look in your rearview mirror and you see something like this off road track we've got set up here. It's uh, it's a pretty cool setup. Hey, I'm back again for a moment. I agree with almost everything that Doug says, but. There were times where I felt like I experienced turbo lag. If I didn't keep the RPMs on the engine up, the truck wouldn't be as responsive as I expected it to be when I dipped into the throttle. But when that engine and turbos are singing, you can really rip. Ram even let us jump the truck. It had three little dirt mounds set up in a row and asked us to go anywhere between 35 and 50 miles an hour over them. The truck landed pretty smooth and was easy to keep under control. It's probably not something you'd want to do all the time for longevity purposes, but it is fun to do. And it's somewhat more impressive because the truck's on-road demeanor is so similar to a Ram with a more traditional suspension setup. A slightly louder exhaust and the wide fenders you see looking out the side view mirrors, also a cool sight, are about the only things that give it away. Really, the RHO is basically a TRX or T-Rex without the Hellcat under the hood, sharing many of the same or similar components and even some of its design cues. Well, that's all for me, but I'll let the chief designers for both the interior and exterior finish out the rest. Super happy to talk about the hero of the Ram sport truck lineup, the RHO. And, um, you know, I think 
this truck, first and foremost, if we start with some dimensions, 88 inches wide. Uh, so, I, you know, I was saying earlier that I think there's not an exterior designer out there that wouldn't be thrilled to work on a sport truck that's 88 inches wide. Uh, so for us, you know, number one, how do we manage that visual width? Well, first and foremost, we, we apply big muscular athletic flares to the, to the truck, and that sort of sets our, sets our fence line, if you will. And then from that, you know, with this, with this product, we actually wanted to amplify that feeling of that visual width even further. So to do that, if we start with the face or the grill of this truck, we actually uh, change the proportion relative to the outgoing truck. So we actually, this grill is taller and wider, if you can believe it, than the outgoing grill. It has a flow through RAM badge, which is functional. That badge actually helps to supply air to satisfy the, the demanding cooling needs of this truck and an all new uh, grill texture, which I think if you look, if you get up on it and actually study this grill texture, it's very precisely drawn, it's very technical, but it's also very aggressive. And from a square area perspective, it's actually more open than the outgoing grill, again, from a function first perspective, to help enable those demanding cooling needs. Flanking the grill, you know, kind of the personality, the eyes of the truck, if you will, are our headlamps, of course. And I mentioned before to, to folks that from an exterior design perspective, you know, we use, we like to use lighting technology and lit signature elements as a way to really and very powerfully telegraph brand identity and brand equity. Because what we'd like, you know, is that 100 yards down the road at night, if all you see are the headlamps, you know that A, it's a RAM, and B, it's an RHO. So the, the lamp itself does a nice job being both aspirational looking, but also fairly menacing and sinister with, with the way the, uh, the graphite features and things, the way we use some color breakup. You know, moving to the side of the truck, really cool, multi-finish beadlock wheel, obviously 35 inch tire. And then we use this two-tone graphic along the body side to break up some of the mass of, of the truck. And again, it, I think that black lower helps plant and set the truck visually, if you will. And then, of course, you know, it's an RHO, so let's celebrate it. Big RHO graphic on the box outer. And then the tail lamps, kind of in concert with the headlamps, I mentioned that, but these are also all new, full LED welcome animation. Uh, I would say, you know, very both aspirational, but in a sense, um, you know, befitting and, and, and somewhat spooky as well, you know, especially flanked by, by the, you know, the, the box outer. And then powder coated steel bumper, new from our Ram 1500 MCA, uh, with, of course, RHO specific exhaust tip, and functional tow hook in the rear. Yeah, my name is John Godro. I'm the chief designer for Ram Truck Interiors. And we're sitting here in the new 2025 Ram RHO. And just like the rest of the new uh, 25 model year 1500s, uh, our goal with the interior design is to raise the benchmark for pickup truck interior design. Things like the steering wheel with the flat bottom and extra grips on the steering wheel, um, the extra bolstering on the seats, uh, the paddle shifters, uh, the head-up display. These are all examples of where there's extra features that are added to RHO beyond your, your core pickup truck uh, like a bighorn. We are literally obsessed in the design studio with our attention to detail. And throughout the cabin on the RHO, you'll see these um, trim rings. You know, we have them here on the console, the, the instrument panel, the door trims, the steering wheel, and there's this texture on there that we call machine finish. This was inspired by uh, an unfinished CNC milling of a metal piece that we had in the studio. And in that part, you could really see like the unfinished cutter pass that the cutting bit left kind of raw and you can see the overlapping arc of the cutter bit on that uh, piece of metal. We painstakingly recreated that texture um, and it's applied to these uh, the tools that make these parts through a laser texturing process and when you're out in the sunlight and you really look at this texture you can see that kind of overlapping effect like you would have with the cutter bit on a CNC machine cut. 
and it really gives the effect that these parts are all um, machined out of solid billets of metal. Uh, the other thing, you know, with RAM, we are always, we love our badges. And of course, for RHO, we have this new RHO specific badge on the center console. And you really, this shows our attention to detail. You know, each one is custom printed with the specific VIN of that truck. It's actually matched to the truck, so that makes it one of a kind. And then it's got all the details for the engine spec, you know, from the, the turbocharger spec, you know, we've got the twin Garrett uh, GT turbochargers, you've got the horsepower and the boost specs here. So those are the exact specs that this uh, engine makes. And so if you ever want to talk, you know, with your friends about, you know, what the horsepower and the boost is, you know, this gives you the specs right there. Uh, you can always be reminded. Kind of the last thing I like to bring attention to in terms of the attention to detail is something you might not notice when you're driving the truck because you're sitting on it. And it's on the back of the seat back mat pockets here. Uh, we have these strips, they're called PAL strips, and they're designed to be compatible with Mole uh, system storage uh, devices. And this is super important on RHO because literally when you're driving this thing as it's meant to be driven out on the off-road trail, you're driving it fast, your gear can be flying all over the cabin. This gives you a way to tie down your gear so you can be driving peace of mind that things aren't going to be moving around and you know, you'll know where it is. Uh, it's where you left it when you stopped driving the truck. So in summary, you know, we're always trying to raise the benchmark for pickup truck interiors with Ram and uh, our attention to detail, all the storage features, and all the technology are examples of where we've done this.